So demand was uh, crazy for it. Yeah, it was crazy time for us. Uh, so what we did uh, after that was we shut it down. So uh, I'll touch upon why we shut it down in a bit uh, later. But before that, I want to get into the title of the talk and what I mean by design and why it's called designing your startup. Does anyone have uh, a definition of design here? Anyone want to attempt? What does design mean for you? No one? What about the ones who are curious about? Enough. So I, you're using the word design uh, as a noun there, is it? Yes, like, like a plan for what you want to do. Okay. Uh, so when I use the word, uh, uh, so I, I always looked up the meaning of the word design uh, and there isn't a generally accepted definition of it. Everyone has their own definition. It means uh, different things to different people, which is which works out for me because then I can go ahead and define it how I want to. And so this is my definition of the work form of design. So design is a process of solving problems or achieving goals given a set of constraints. Right? Does everyone agree with that? Does anyone disagree? Anyone? Okay. The two key points here are that you're solving a problem, you're fulfilling a need, but you're doing that within uh, uh, given constraints, right? So there are these boundaries, there are these constraints that exist, uh, that, that's the context of the problem and you're always trying to solve them within that. Uh, so what that necessarily means is that design is about making trade-offs, right? You have to balance all these constraints that you have. You can't have your cake and eat it too. So, you know, there, there is a give and take and there's a balancing that has to happen. Does that side look interesting? <laughs> so, uh, I want to pause that discussion about design for a while and I want to talk about something else that happened last year and that was the next slide. Uh, I became a dad as well last year, right? That's one of those events that can have like a profound impact on you and how you perceive uh, what you're doing in life and what your goals are. And so it did have an impact on me. It made me realize that uh, these years that my daughter's growing up, uh, uh, the formative years are the most important for me. And that's something that I didn't want to miss out, right? Uh, so it made me realize in, in turn that time and location independence was very important for me. And that became one of the most important goals in my life. Uh, I wanted to have time and location independence. That means that I want to be able to work from where I want to work and when I want to work, right? Uh, before this, uh, I was doing a job. So, you know, we would have flexi hours and stuff like that, but that means I still need to give in a fixed set of hours. I need to be at a certain place, uh, you know, because I have to interact with a lot of people, I have to get stuff done. Uh, but now, suddenly, my time was very important to me because I, I wanted to spend it with my daughter. There you go. So that became one of my constraints for the startups, uh, for the startup that I wanted to create. Now, uh, if you don't remember anything else about this talk, there's this one thing that I, I want you to take away about it, which is that uh, when people talk about startups, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk about the idea. Uh, there's a lot of focus on solving the right problems, finding the right solutions, how do you acquire customers. But no one's talking about the startup founder, what you want out of this, right? There's, there's this myth that ideas uh, or good ideas are very rare to find. Yeah? So everyone takes the first idea that they get and they start working on it, you know, and they give everything to it. The idea becomes the most important thing and they have to make it work at every cost. Uh, that might be the case if you're looking for big ideas, right? If, you're, if you want the sort of ideas that will make you millionaires. Right? Uh, 
but that's that's not everyone's goal. It certainly wasn't mine. So uh, the the thing that I want to emphasize here is that uh, when you when you think of an idea, think about what that idea is giving you as well, right? Apart from the money, what, is it is it going to help you achieve your life goals or not? And and that's the sort of criteria. That's the sort of framework within which you need to think about uh, the ideas that you work on. And that's 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 what I was talking about. Just give me a sec. So this is now I can I can tell you why we shut down the first start of the, that I started right. Uh, it, it was it was one of those startup ideas that wanted to be big. It had to be big, it had to get economies of scale for it to make sense. And I realized that at this point in my life, that's something that I don't want to do. I don't want to work on an idea that's going to take up a lot of my time uh, and is, it's going to have me running around uh, all the time. So, uh, which is why I walked away from that idea. It's, it's, it's a very hard decision to make because here's something that's making a lot of money, has a lot of potential, but I still chose to walk away from it because for me, it, it was a very clear decision, right? I, I have these constraints that I have and I have to, uh, you know, work within those constraints. And it's very clear to me that this idea is not going to take me where I want to go in life. So here are some of uh, the criteria that I came up for the ideas that I'll work with, right? That makes sense for me. Uh, given my context, given my needs, and given uh, my constraints. Uh, the first one is passive recurring income. What this means is that uh, I want to sort of income, uh, let, me, let me backtrack, I want to build something that makes money for me without me having to be actively involved uh, in that product all the time, right? Seems like uh, uh, the, the perfect uh, uh, idea for everyone. But uh, the way to do this, right, is uh, first of all, the recurring part is very important. You need to have uh, money coming in every month, you know. You can't just charge a one-time uh, charge for the product. You can't sell someone the product and the guy disappears and then you don't make any money. You need that money to be coming uh, every month, month after month. And uh, that way you can sustain yourself for much longer and focus on other things while that's making money for you. Uh, the next criteria was multiple products. Uh, the idea here is that uh, statistically I'm more likely to fail uh, when I'm working on a, an idea than succeed, which is why it makes sense. Uh, which is why it makes sense for me to work on multiple ideas uh, because, and also uh, on small on smaller ideas as well, right? If I take a big idea and I spend too much time working on a on a big uh, idea that doesn't work out, I would have wasted a lot of time, right? Which, this is why I need to scale down and focus on very small things uh, so that there's very small turnaround time and I can get immediate feedback and see whether it works or not. Uh, there's also this aspect uh, of luck. Uh, luck is uh, a game of probability, right? Uh, the more I play the game, the more better my odds get. So which is why uh, uh, I would prefer working on multiple ideas and take that one big idea and bet everything on it and hope that it succeeds. The chances of a big idea succeeding could be maybe one in a million, but the chances of a small idea succeeding uh, could be maybe one in 100 or one in 1,000, right? And you can control that by doing your research in terms of the sort of space that you're building the product for, the sort of niches that you're building the product for. Sure. I have a question here. Sure, go ahead. How do you balance between this and spreading yourself in the That's a good idea. So uh, that's a good question I meant. Uh, when you say spreading yourself too thin, you mean uh, not focusing enough on each product? Right. Right. So that's where this concept of building small products comes into the picture. Right? If you're building a big product, 
uh, it requires a certain critical mass, it requires a lot of investment from you before it can succeed. And in that context, if you're focusing on multiple products, you might not do justice to any given product. But if you're building these small products and you're solving very easy problems, uh, and there's lots of easy problems out there to solve, and I'll, and I'll come to that in a bit. But in that context, you can solve that problem and you can move on, right? Uh, it, it, it won't take, so for example, there's one product that I've, that I've built that's taken me about a month to build uh, and it requires no work from me after that. Uh, there is something to be said about taking that product to the next level if you wanted to, right? Uh, that product competes in a market where there are about uh, nine competitors, right? All of them are VC funded companies uh, with about, you know, 20 plus employees. And they are playing a different game, right? I'm playing a different game. So I'm not looking at achieving those sort of uh, uh, goals with that product. For me, it's about, uh, you know, solving a very specific problem for a subset of those users and uh, making money of that. Does that make sense? What's the product? I'll, I'll come to that in a bit, yeah. So feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, you, as you can see, I'm, I'm sort of winging it. So if you ask me questions, it helps you get information out of me as well. Uh, I think I touched upon this. Uh, uh, 37 Signals talks a lot about this. Uh, has, who knows 37 Signals here? Okay. So uh, solving hard problems is means a lot of time and investment again, and that's something that I, that I didn't want, So, which is why I focus on easy problems. And there are easy problems everywhere for people to solve. Uh, 37 Signals, uh, DHH has this very famous quote uh, about how he talks about Basecamp being just a little bit better than email, right? There's, there's all these competitors that they have that think that they need to be far, far ahead uh, of just email. You know, they build all these complicated projects, uh, project management systems. But they don't realize that people just, people right now are using email to do these things. They're using email to collaborate, to communicate. They just need something that's a little bit better than that. And that's enough for a small set of users, which, which makes them money. Uh, this is the other thing, right? Uh, if you focus, if you, have, if you build a bit, big product and you're trying to you know, make a mass market product and target a lot of people, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure if you're going to make everyone happy, right? Which is why no one does that. Uh, and which is why you end up with a product that's the least common denominator for everyone. Which in turn means that you, you're not making everyone happy. In fact, you're not making anyone happy with a product like that. But instead, if you focus on a very small niche of people who have, a, you know, within that big segment have a very small need, you solve their problem beautifully for them, uh, and that, that totally works out, right? They, they love the solution. They don't, they don't go to these other vendors because they don't need the, the, uh, the other things that the software is doing. They just need that one, one problem solved for them. So that's about niche markets. Uh, there was this talk, uh, there was this drive that I went to with, with uh, a, a, a friend of mine a while back who spoke about uh, having enough money in life, right? Uh, I think a lot of us think, when we think about enough money, we think about how much more do I need to make? How much more do I need to save up? And, you know, we, we were stuck in this mode of thinking about how much more to make. And he uh, sort of changed that perception for me by saying that uh, he has enough money now because he reduced the amount of spending that he made. Uh, what he did is he, he sold off his house in this big city and went and stayed in a small country, uh, in a small country house. And he's very happy doing what he does. He loves what he's doing. But he got his freedom and his independence by reducing his cost, by changing his lifestyle, not by getting more in life, right? So there's something to be said about, about giving up things as opposed to getting more. And that's what working by myself is, is for me. It's about reducing my cost. If there's more of us, there's more money that we need to make. If there's just me, I just need, you know, just a little bit of amount, amount of money to do well, basically. So uh, this is feedback that uh, some of my users have given for that product that I mentioned. This product, uh, this is an interesting story as well, right? Uh, since I'm working alone, 
there's only so much I can do. Uh, I'm, I'm doing the programming, I'm doing the designing, the marketing, sales, all of that stuff. So, uh, and like every programmer, I'm lazy. So uh, I need to optimize for my laziness. So I looked around for ideas that, uh, that where I could get away by doing very little. And one way to do that is, uh, is apps these days, right? Uh, I found a platform known as Shopify, which is an e-commerce platform. Uh, they have an app store, which is very cool for people like us because we don't have to spend time acquiring customers. Shopify has an incentive to sell or, or to tell people, uh, the shop owners, about uh, the marketplace. And people automatically come to the marketplace. So I don't have to spend time acquiring customers. Uh, and so that's what the product does. What it, what it does is it takes their inventory off of Shopify and creates a Facebook store for them. So, so it enables social commerce. And like I said, that space has about nine competitors. One of them is, is a Y Combinator company as well from uh, 2011 last year. And I'm competing with them. Uh, when I launched this product, uh, there were about six competitors. And uh, there's two of them in the top 10, right? Since I've launched, uh, I'm in the top 10 above all the others that are there. And I think the reason I'm there is because I'm solving a very small problem for uh, which exists for a large set of people, you know? People don't, re uh, this is, as software developers, we, we, we and like DHH says as well, that, you know, we try to solve uh, elaborate prob problems for people, but not realizing that, it, for example, in, in Shopify, a lot of these people uh, are not techies, right? They're just regular people who want to sell stuff. They don't understand all these features. So what I, what I did was build uh, a product that basically has no features. It has absolutely no features. You just click, 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 it installs, and it's done, right? It takes some default decisions for them, and that's it. That's all it does, and people love it. And it's obvious from those reviews that they love it. So yeah, that's about solving sol small problems. Is, are there any questions about anything I've said so far? Does anyone disagree? Does anyone have anything to say? What is the product? You didn't get the product? Sir, you mentioned something. So what the product does is it's basically an app that takes uh, that people who are using the Shopify e-commerce platform for, to build their e-commerce store, it takes their inventory off of Shopify and creates a Facebook store for them. So the product is actually a Facebook store for people who already have a regular e-commerce store. Does that make sense? So you convert stuff from one platform to another simpler platform for them with yeah. working more from there. Right. So that's one of my products that's, that's sort of doing well. I, I make a little money. Uh, based on what I've described so far, uh, I, it should be obvious that none of these ideas, like, uh, you know, a million dollar ideas, I'm, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, uh, the eventual goal is to have about nine or ten products, each of them making a small amount of money for me uh, uh, and, and, you know, sustain uh, me for a while. I think sustain is a really bad word. Uh, it's for me to have a decent life. Uh, and not a rich life, just a decent life. Uh, there's this other aspect about uh, recognizing your strengths as well. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the sort of person who gets bored very quickly with stuff. Uh, so this plays to my strengths, which is building small products, moving on, building other products, and you know, therefore it's fun for me as well. So uh, don't forget your strengths, play on your strengths as well. Uh, I don't know about that. My, my graph has been going <laughs> that way, so I, I don't know about that. Any other questions? Investment. investment. Uh, my investment right now is uh, a Linode slice. That's, that's a VPS, which is about $19. Uh, and I pay them 5 bucks for backup. And that's about it. That's all my costs. Right. I work out of home, uh, do everything by myself. So my, my there, there is another cost where, which I pay GitHub for a private repo. But, uh, so everything is inside $30. So everything above $30 is profit for me. And that one VPS, because these are small products, these are not targeted towards millions of users, that small VPS can host about you know, five to 10 apps for me. 
So my cost remains fixed while I keep making more and more money. I'm sorry? Yeah, that's, that's the line of VPS that I'm talking about. Yeah. At some point, I think I'll move to getting my own uh, uh, bare metal machine. But for now, this works out for me. Any other questions? Right, so uh, that's something. Uh, pricing is the most fun part of creating a startup. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes with this product at least. Uh, so I went with a freemium model where I have a free version and then people pay me for a little more features. You know? So the, the, the mistake that I made was giving away too much in the free version. Uh, it's so good that people don't need to upgrade to the paid version is really stupid of me but e even given that I still make uh, a decent amount of money so uh, right now that ties into this other thing with, with the Shopify platform right? that made it very easy for me they take care of billing for me I have no billing system Shopify collects money from my users and they give me money once a month so I, it, it's almost like getting a salary from Shopify it's brilliant I don't have to worry about any of the hassles of dealing with customers and stuff like that uh, I intentionally didn't put anything in here, so you could come and talk to me and I can tell you and I, I know they're interested in it, but uh, the, the startup that I founded is called Sim Things, Simple Things, yeah, S-I-M-P-T-H-I-N-G-S dot com. Any other questions? Do you have any figure that how many people are using app? So with that app, I have uh, over 1,500 shops using it around the world. Right. And that figure came up in how many months? Uh, in less than two months, I think. In, in about two or three months. Yeah. You get support calls? I get support emails. I do support by email. Uh, and it's mostly the free users who ask for support. <laughs> uh, I, I, I rarely get support requests from paid users. So, uh, And then there are users who don't Why belong. So I think free users uh, have a tendency to complain a lot more. I, d I don't know why. I've seen this over and over again in lots of different contexts. Uh, the guy who's complaining the most is always the free user who's not giving you too much business. Uh, uh, and that reminds me of another uh, uh, value that I have. If I, I believe in firing customers as well. If there's someone who uh, uh, is giving me too much trouble and not worth the pain, I would ask that person, uh, to stop using the product and move on to something else because I, I don't want them on the, on the product as well. Yeah. How did you launch the product? How did I launch? Yes. That's again part of why I chose Shopify. Uh, uh, they have a place where all their customers are focused on. Right? They have a blog and they have a forum. All I had to do was do a blog post. Uh, on the platform? On, on, no, not on the platform. So, the, the company has a blog yes. and the company has a forum, so I just made posts there. Okay. That's it, that's all I had to do. Well, does that answer your question? Yes, it is. Okay. And 1500, so many are the players. Ha! <laughs> uh, so, uh, who's, who's familiar with the freemium model? Okay. Do you know what sort of conversions people get on the freemium model? One, who said one person? Five person. What else? Anyone? Any other? Three person. So that's I, I think that's where the range is in the industry as well, and that's where I am as well. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in between that. Somewhere in between that. Thank you so much. Thank you.